A couple of days ago, I went bass fishing with one of these, a Bombarda float. But unlike the last time I went bass fishing with a Bombarda float, where I used one of these, a saltwater fly, a sand eel fly, I used a soft plastic. In this case, a 115mm redgill white. Now for those of you that have not seen my previous Bombarda float fishing videos for bass or don't know what a Bombarda float is for, basically it's used as a weight to be able to cast out from the shore very, very lightweight, almost weightless lures like these very lightweight soft plastics. But it's mainly used as an alternative to conventional fly fishing to be able to cast out flies either fishing for trout or, or sea trout. Now using a float as a weight to cast out very lightweight lures a distance from the shore is not new. Floats have been used for years. For example a bubble float as your weight or some people have used a Jif lemon which they fill with candle wax drill a couple of holes and use that as your weight. So, that, so it's, not, it's not new. But in my opinion, from my experience, using a Bombarda float over, let's say, using a bubble float is much better for a couple of reasons. The first is that the, the Bombarda float is much more streamlined. There it, therefore, it casts much, much further than you can cast a bubble float. And also, because it's streamlined, when you're drawing this through across the surface of the water, it glides across the surface much easier and it's got less resistance than your bubble float. So much better in my opinion for this type of fishing. Now some of you may be thinking, and, I, and this question has been asked in a previous video, why do you need a weight, a float as your weight to cast out a lightweight lure? Why not just use a lead? Well of course you can, but a lot of shore bass fishing is done in very, very shallow water and over rough ground. Sometimes you might be casting out into only say five foot of water and then drawing it over, over very, very, very shallow rough ground. So if you used a weight in that situation, when you cast it out, as soon as this lead hits the surface, it's going to go jump down very, very quickly. But also when you're retrieving it, because you need to keep it in your shallow water, you need to keep it in the water column and keep it above that rough ground, you would have to reel it quite quickly. Whereas if you're using, let's say, a bubble float, or in my case, the Bombarda float, because they float, although you can get these that sink if you, for deeper water, but because this one floats, when I cast it out, if I'm only casting out in, say, five to ten feet of water. I don't have to worry about it because it sits on the surface. But also, when I retrieve, the, retrieve it in, the lure trailing behind works very, very shallow, just under the surface, which means you can, you can reel it very, very slowly without any fear of, of it all sinking down and getting snagged. So, that's, that's the reason that this is used over a lead weight in shallow water. But I'm sure if you're fishing in uh, off the rock somewhere, you've got a decent bit of depth, you've got 15, you're 15 to 30 feet or more water, then no problem at all to use a lead instead of, instead of the float. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is talk about the setup that, I've, that I used in the video and after I've shown you the setup, I'll explain why I'm using this particular setup. But first, the, the rod and reel. I've got a nine foot lure rod, which is rated 15 to 40 grams. And on that is my usual 4,000 size lure reel, which is loaded. In this case, it's 18 pound braid. I usually use between 15 to 20 pound braid for all of my lure fishing. And then joined to the end of the Joined to the end of the braid, I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, which is joined by an Albright special knot. 
I'll talk about the length of the leader in a moment. And then thread onto the leader, I've got the bombarda float. And then after that is a small swivel, uh, a small bead, and then a swivel. And then next, in between two swivels, is a short piece of much, much thicker line, thicker, heavier line, that is longer than the length of the, fl the float. And I'll explain why in a, mo in a moment. And then finally, a bit of 15 pound fluorocarbon down to the red gill. And the total length from the float down to the red gill usually ranges between five and six feet, which is which suits a nine foot rod. Any longer trace when you're trying to cast would be, would be too long and make it awkward to cast. But if you use a longer rod, as they do out in Scandinavia when they use the Bombarda float and the flies for things, let's say like sea trout, they use maybe 11 foot, 12 foot rods. It means they can use a much longer trace. But for bass fishing, you don't, in my, from my experience, you don't need a great long trace. Okay, now, the reason for using a leader, and the reason I, I'm, the, I'm saying this because someone asked the question, well, why, don't you, why do you need to use a leader? Why, do you, why can't you just thread your braid, go your braid straight through the float down to your trace? Well, you can do that, but one of the slight problems when you're bombarda float fishing I've now never found it a major issue, but it does happen is that when you cast these out, this flies through the air, as it does with any float, float fishing, and then this quite long leader comes backwards, of course. Now, there is an occasion where it gets caught around the top, the leader above the float, and gets hung up like that. Now, if you've got braid straight through and this comes back and you get a tangle around your braid, if braid, if you get any tangles or knots in braid, it's a nightmare to undo. So much easier if this does get caught around the, the, the line leader above the float to have nylon or fluorocarbon, much less hassle trying to untangle it. But as regards the length of the leader, you don't really need a great long leader. You can lose a long leader, but you don't need it. So what, I've, what I do now, what I've settled on, is just to have a leader, a nylon or fluorocarbon leader, that is a little bit longer than the length of the trace. So for example, if you've got a six foot trace, then maybe a seven, seven to eight foot leader. That's all you need. Because the shorter the leader, the, the better it will cast. In other words, the more braid you'll, that gets out there beyond the rod tip quicker, the further and the easier it is to cast. Okay, so I've got about a seven to eight foot leader, fluorocarbon leader. Okay, now the reason for this little bit of section here of thicker and heavier line is to try and, pre try and prevent this problem that happens occasionally where this comes back and gets caught around the top of the float. You get a little bit of a heavier section like that and it helps to keep it, sep keep it separate. Now I talk a bit more about this in the video, so I don't want to go repeat myself, but basically there's all sorts of set setups that people use uh, when they go bombarda float fishing and, and people have suggested it to me in comments. One is that you have a, a thicker, the, the float trap between two swivels and a thicker piece of line the same, but you also use a bit of plastic tubing to try and to keep that separation when it flies through the air. And these systems obviously work, but this is what I've settled on because I don't really like the idea of trapping the float between two swivels and I don't like the idea of being uh, using a bit of plastic tubing. To me, this is much simpler. So a bit of section of heavier line and I found that it, that it does help a lot. It's not 100% cure, as I mentioned in the video later, but this a thicker piece of line, I think in this video, in this, I was using 20, you can use, probably better to use something heavier, maybe even 30, 40 pound uh, short section 
of line, a bit of extra weight to try and keep a bit of separ separation. But that's the setup that, 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 that I use. I found it to be okay. As regards to the length of this trace, what I found with bass fishing, you don't need, you don't need huge, great long trace. Th I found that this float doesn't put the bass off in any way. In fact, this float gliding across the surface, creating a bit of a wake, and then down at the end of the wake, you've got your lure working, could actually be an attractant, an, 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 an attractant to the fish rather than putting it, putting it off. So what I found, five to six feet for bass fishing is abso absolutely fine, and of course it suits the length of the rod that I'm using. Okay, so that's the intro. We'll go and look at the video now and, and how I got on using, on this occasion, the red gill as my lure. Right, I'm ready to start fishing. I've got here just in time to catch the start of the flooding tide. The, the tide has been flooding in about half an hour. Ideally, I would have liked to have got here the last couple of hours of the ebb but couldn't make it because of work but never mind so we've got great conditions just got a bit of a bit of a side wind a bit of cloud cover at the moment and i'm going to fish definitely going to fish three or four hours of the flooding tide we'll see how the fishing goes um, i may stay stay longer and, and fish the whole of the tide but hopefully i'll be able to show you that this this method working fishing with the red gill Now the, the method is just a very, very slow retrieve and the red gill will work literally just a couple of inches, two or three inches under the surface. If I retrieve faster, it will skip, it'll actually skip along the surface. So just a slow retrieve and of course that will be enough to enough to get that paddle towel working. In fact, with the, even though the, the float is about 30 yards away from me now, I can actually see the red gill literally just below the surface, trailing behind it. So it's really showing up well. I don't know if you saw, saw that. Did you see that? There we go. Well, literally for first go, and I've got a little bass. I actually saw this because the red gear is literally working um, a few inches under the surface. I saw the swirl um, of this little bass chasing it. There we go. He certainly, he certainly wanted that red gill. And we got it out. Off it goes. Well, that's a good start. And encouraging, even though, even though a very, very, uh, very small bass, encouraging that the fish are here. Let's see if I can show you this, this red gill working. There you are. Just a slow retrieve. It, it almost, it's actually, in fact, it's almost on the surface. Certainly only a few inches under. When you fish low water here, there, there's um, weed that sits on the surface. It's called, it's called spaghetti weed. You can see some of it just there, just sitting on the surface. And at the moment, of course, I'm catching it, um, as you'll see with, when this comes in. There, it's a bit of a pain, but once you, once you get a bit of depth, 
then um, of course it, it gets a it gets a cover in the water and it's not so much it's not so much of a problem. In fact, what I'm going to have to do there, there, there's beds of it. I can see there's a lot of it there, so I might have to sort of just change where I'm fishing, try and fish away from it. Just had a touch then. Had a little quiet spell, but the tide the tide's flooding, moving now. Just had a little knock then, and just sort of jumped there, and I and I'm pretty sure that that jump was not a bass. That looked looked to me like a trout, a sea trout. Um, I may be wrong. Bit of loose weed, unfortunately, in the water, which is a bit of a bit of a pain as it all always is of course when you go when you go lure fishing loose weed And we're in. Yeah, got a bit of movement in the in the tide again now, and uh, that might bring the fish on a bit. There we go. Now this this feels like a better sized fish. Yeah, this does feel like a well compared to those tiny ones anyway. Still, still small, but not tight. A little bit bigger. Fantastic. Get it straight back. Yeah, tip I can give you if you're struggling for for what colour to buy with the bass lures, any bass lure, plugs, soft plastics. I mean, my theory is to try and stick to natural colors. So for example, um, that res resembles a sand eel or a mackerel or a sprat or a pilchard or a smelt, um, small pollock, uh, wrasse, sort of the, the sort of uh, colors of the bait fish. But if you're struggling, my advice is, go for white all white for some reason all white works and if you think about it if you've got a, a bass hitting a sand eel from underneath or hitting a mackerel or a lot of the other fish the undersize the underside of those fish is basically white um, so if, if a bass is, is seeing this from underneath he's seeing this white underside there um, it it'll be it'll be a, a sort of a natural a natural color 
colour for it anyway. But of course, stand, these stand out, the all white stands out really brilliantly in the water. I mean, I'm seeing this just working just under the surface from sort of 30, 40 yards out. So yeah, so that's my tip. If you're struggling for colours and you've got an option of getting white, go for all white. <laughs> I must admit that that last bass that felt felt bigger than, than than it was. I think that's because the the other two were so small. Um, that's more probably why it felt why it felt bigger. Now this this definitely feels bigger. Yeah, this definitely feels bigger. This is it's amazing actually you're talking about red gills how when you you, you rarely sometimes you do but you rarely read about them on mo in modern bass fishing about the red gill um, which of course is still I mean you out on a boat um, or kayak trolling uh, troller the original red gills still used by a lot of commercial commercial anglers uh, commercial fishermen still use the the original red gill and just goes to show that they still oh that's a better fish Well, off it goes. I was just going to hold it up and uh, show you there, but but never mind. But a better fish, still a small fish. I measured it, went 39. Um, but yeah, great fun. Yeah, going back to what I was saying when I was playing that fish in um, about the red gills, they still a fantastic, fantastic lure. And of course, using this method, when you've got the the unweighted red red gill the red red gill original the unweighted ones it enables you using the the bombarda float or if you choose to use the bubble float or whatever um, it enables you to to fish them from the shore and be able be able to get out uh, a distance and cut and cover some ground cast out and didn't see i didn't see this boat coming on the left here Anyway, I'm okay. I'm this side of it. Well, so that's the only slight problem when you come fishing during the day um, at locations like this, particularly at this time of year, August, obviously, it's going to be very, very busy. Uh, busy on the water, busy in the water, just generally busy. So re not the ideal time uh, to come if you want to catch some really really decent sized bass probably best to come go fishing at night or and this method would work at night go fishing at night or crack a dawn or very late evening when it's much much quieter there we go there we go Hey. 
Uh, not a bad one. I think that might beat, I reckon that will beat the previous one, maybe. Well that one it is 41, 41. Let's get it unhooked. Right, let's see if I can show you this one before we get it back. Great to see him seeing this ultra clear water. All right, just to go over the over the method again, it's just cast it out, and it's just a, just a slow retrieve. And it's almost the red gill is almost working on the surface. If I was to reel at that speed, it would literally skip across the surface. But just working it at that speed, it works a few just a few a few inches under the surface. But of course, bear in mind that we're fishing shallow water here. Um, I'm casting out in probably, maximum casting distance, I'm probably only casting out into about 10 feet of water. So fishing shallow. Ah, uh, blimmin' loose weed. There's a nuisance. We got uh, very, very strong winds coming in tomorrow. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll go on the, um, for, for the next few days, actually, I thought maybe I'll go and do some surf fishing. But the problem is, there's so much loose weed in the water, it could, it could be an absolute nightmare, even in calm conditions like this. Um, and other marks that I fish, rock marks, there's loads of loose weed. So the surf beaches, if it's like this, once it blows up tomorrow, 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, it would be an absolute nightmare, so I might, might give it a miss. Well, I'm, I'm pleased with this setup where I've got this little section, a little section of, of much thicker line in between two swivels. Um, it's definitely, I'm not saying I never, I think I've had one, one where it's caught up, but basically most times it, it's stopping it, just this little bit of thicker line. So I'm I'm pleased with that. I'm going to stick with this setup now um, with future Bombarda float fishing. I, I don't really like this. I know it probably works and many people in the videos that I've done have, have mentioned it about this piece of plastic tubing down here. Um, yeah, I'm sure it works, but I don't like, I don't like the idea to be honest with you. I much prefer this setup, a bit of thicker line, heavier line. Um, a little longer, bit longer, longer than the bit longer than the float, and that seems to not a hundred percent cure for those occasional tangles, but it definitely it's definitely helped. Interesting today, even though I've caught a few bass, I've not actually, apart from the, the little swirls when they've been following the red gill. Um, I'm not actually seeing any signs of them. In other words, no. Oh, having said that, look at that. A jump there. <laughs> yeah, no, no splashing, no jumping. I'm pretty sure the one I did, the jump I did see, so I saw the fish, was a sea trout, not a bass. Um, so, in other words, I'm not seeing a load of bass activity at the moment. But they were here. Well, I may, I may have seen the best of the fishing now. Um, it may go quiet. You, you never know. You never know. I'll, ca I'll carry on because it's so pleasant, pleasant doing this and standing by the water. Although I am getting pushed back now, 
Well, I might have, uh, might have to move, might have difficulty casting as I'm getting pushed back to the bushes. Well, I did get tangled on that one. So it's, it's happened occasionally, but not, not very often, uh, which is good. So that's the method I'm going to stick with. Now, a bit of, bit of thicker line, and what I might try next time is, uh, this, is only, this is only 20 pound. What I might do next time is go for something like 40 pound. See if, see if that makes, makes any difference. But I'm also I'm also combining it with stopping it just before it hit just before it hits the surface to get it to unfold. Main thing is long as long as it works. I mean if I was getting tangles every single cast, then of course you've got to do something about it, but I'm not. So it's really not an issue, and I really don't want to go down the road of of bits of plastic tubing and and the trap in the float between between two swivels and a bit of plastic tubing, even though I'm, I'm not saying that doesn't work. I, I really don't want to go down that road if I can help it. There we go. I was just I was just actually thinking, you know, I'm gonna. I think I'll call it a day. Um, because I wasn't fighting, didn't seem to be any fish around, but just goes just goes to show. You never know. It's such a great way. This is such a fun way of fishing. This really is. This camera's on, yeah. back right that's it I've had enough now and not only that as you'll see in a minute I've been pushed I've been pushed right back now There you go. Push right back, Virch. <laughs> Won't be long now, and there'll be absolutely no room for me here. Good, good job. I got my wading trousers on, my waist waders. But yeah, that was a uh, that was a huge, a huge amount of fun. So hopefully, that showed showed you once again that this method is an alternative method, a fun method, and a good method when you're shore fishing, to fish in a way of fishing virtually weightless or very lightweight, lures, either saltwater flies, or the little soft plastics like this, red gills, sluggos, ragus. It's a great way, it's a, it's a fun way, and and given that the fish are here, of course, it, it works. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.